I have four organizers for Fight for Our Lives who organized the March for Our Lives rally in Albuquerque with us in studio this week. Zoe Kraft is a sophomore at La Cueva High School. Riazala Ali Kozai is a senior at Highland High School. Blair Dixon is a freshman at UNM. And Jonathan Alonso is a sophomore at the Native American Community Academy. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to start with you. Uh, with gun violence specifically at school, what concerns do you have about guns coming into your school right now? So I think one of the main concerns is that we do not want our teachers armed. Um, right now, over 70% of APS's school district is made up of minority students, and those would be disproportionately affected if we brought in more guns and started to over-police our schools. Um, so that's definitely one of our main concerns right now. Jonathan, pick up on that a little bit. Um, why is that something that young people are particularly concerned about right now that you're working with? I think right now, especially um, in communities of color because of the neighborhoods that they live in, which are like so commonly labeled as ghettos or war zones, we specifically see those students targeted through over-policing or excessive force, and that's something that we as students shouldn't stand for, and that's why we've specifically included it in our campaign. Yeah, and having at school, you know, that black and brown students are often expelled, suspended mm -hmm. at much higher rates than their white peers. Is that bringing guns and you think adds something to the mix that is even more dangerous for those young people? Yeah. Okay. Blair, what about you? Are you worried about guns on campus at UNM? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, after the Parkland happened, uh, I remember laying in bed that night and kind of thinking to myself, you know, I think I think I'm a little more fortunate because I am a freshman in, uh, in college, and I guess you don't really see that happening um, very frequently. And then the very next day, there was a gunman on campus, and the UNM administration did virtually nothing. Um, there were elementary kids down on campus that day that they had to send home, and we didn't even lock down. So I knew immediately I had to get involved. Rios, what are your thoughts as you're watching this go on? You moved here from Afghanistan, you're now at Highland High School. What's been surprising to you in watching this discussion about gun violence in schools in America? Uh, I think at first uh, we shouldn't even talk about it, it's the United States. Uh, when, when I, once I moved here, uh, people were living with the same fear that they're living in Afghanistan, that one day they're, they're going to be shot. Mm -hmm. Have you felt unsafe at school? Um, Yes, sometimes. Um, I, there, I, I personally know some people in my school and their profile pictures there are like AR-15s. So I definitely am, am scared and I don't want to live with that same fear that mm. I escaped. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, do you hear students at the Native American Community Academy talking about gun violence? Um, yeah, I think uh, gun violence is something through our communities that isn't really, like all the time it isn't school shootings. It's also through suicides and through street, vi uh, through street violence. And so those are some of the things that we see that the, it bleeds through our community that's outside of school. But also inside school there have been like threats that have been made. Uh, to me specifically, I've had threats that I've had to deal with. And that puts me in an uncomfortable situation because then I have to make the decision. Do I call the police? Do I leave this? And then that puts me in an even more dangerous situation because they know who I am, where I'll be, and it's just really unsafe for everyone. I, th I know that you're someone who, too, who thinks about, you know, kind of the struggles of young people. Some people who've experienced violence and are perpetuating violence, that they need some support. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's hard, though, when you also feel unsafe in that situation. Yeah. Um, so, Blair, thousands of people turned out for the March for Our Lives rally in Albuquerque. They also turned out at rallies around New Mexico and in other states. What do you think worked about the rally in Albuquerque? Uh, I think it was the turnout of the youth, actually. Um, you know, Barack Obama said that um, everything that has been changed um, in our government and just in our country has been driven by youth. And I think that that is something that is totally true, and I think that we really saw in the turnout um, of the event. You know, we were anticipating three to 5,000 people, and we ended up with about 10,000, which we were just not prepared for. All of our shirts sold out before the march even started, and we were just overwhelmed with support, and uh, just it really warmed my heart in particular. Zoe, did anything surprise you about what happened on Saturday? Um, I was definitely surprised by the turnout. Um, I was expecting, you know, two to 3,000 people. Um, we ended up with, you know, close to 10,000. And I think one of the things that really worked about our organizing strategies is that, you know, even across the organizers, we're all from different cultural and, you know, political backgrounds, but we do all agree that no matter what, you know, our kids deserve to be safe. Um, and I don't think that should be a divisive issue. Mm -hmm. Riaz, I noticed there were, there were lots of different ages there. I talked to some students in elementary school out at the rally, high school students, college students. Um, do you think it's important to bring all those ages together? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think uh, we need everybody to be involved in this. It's not just students' problem, and it's everybody's problem. That's uh, school shooting. It's not only school shootings. There are people who are getting shot in the streets and on the way to work, so definitely. 
Jonathan, you mentioned that just a moment ago, that violence is not just about gun violence in school, it's about suicide and, and gun mm -hmm. violence in the community. What do you hope will change in Albuquerque specifically? What changes are you looking for? I think for Albuquerque Public Schools, we're looking for more funding to go towards prevention, intervention, and support programs. So really giving our teachers and our schools more counselors and therapists that are trained not only in de-escalation, but also crisis intervention and behavioral health in general. So that when there is a student experiencing these kinds of issues that the counselors know what to do and how to handle it. Mm -hmm. Zoe, what do you think about that as well? Do you think they need that at La Cueva? I would definitely agree with that. Um, I think La Cueva has funding for a lot of different programs, but um, the counseling department there and you know other supportive resources are definitely overlooked including restorative justice programs and I think that's something that's definitely needed um, in our schools here. What do you think about it? Riaz mentioned um, you know, seeing people with ARs and their uh, social media profiles. You mentioned experiencing a threat as well. I've heard of people being threatened online. Is there a need to talk about social media and what's happening on social media when it comes to gun violence? What do you think? I think that in some ways, you know, gun violence on social media is just a sign of the larger issue um, and how guns are really perpetuating, um, being perpetuated in our society, gun culture, the culture of violence. Um, but I think when we talk about, you know, video games being violent, um, you know, violence that we see on social media, that's a sign of a larger problem and pattern. Mm. Blair, did you want to add something? Uh, yeah, I completely agree. Um, I think that a lot of people kind of tend to overlook the fact that social media has a great amount of pull in our modern day society and that um, these things that we're putting on online, they're there forever. And if we overlook these, like Zoe was saying, that th this is a, a huge sign of what is part of the larger problem. So if we're overlooking these, um, then you know we're just contributing to not coming to a solution to help prevent these further um, things that are going to happen. Yeah, what about you guys, what do you think? Um, I think most people, they, they put it there so they can look strong, I think, and uh, I think it's not the point. Like, I think they're cowards. Uh, to me, they're cowards. They're not thinking of others. There are people who, who should not even see. I think people are, uh, some people are affected by it, and it's uh, definitely, I think, scary. Um, do you think that adults should be watching what's going on in social media? Yeah, I think definitely. I think especially what we've seen recently from the Parkland shooter was that there were a lot of posts on his social media, like with guns and him, like with his personal weapons and what he had. And I think that if someone had reported that and not only not reported it, but like when they did report it, that it was taken seriously and not just another kid that's posting guns on his social media. And that um, when we focus to the, when we, sorry, when we start focusing on those signs that are, like they said, a part of the greater issue, then we can really start to focus on the root causes and how we can begin to solve it. So you guys have now transitioned into Fight for Our Lives. You're going to be doing more work following the rally. Jonathan, you want to take this to Governor Martinez. What do you want from her? So what we're demanding from Governor Martinez is an immediate emergency legislative session to specifically address the gun laws in New Mexico. Since 2014, we've seen two school shootings in our state, and we have yet to see a legislative change. And she said going into her... Um, I forget exactly which year, but she has said before that she protects, uh, that she stands for protecting New Mexican children, and we want to see her uphold what she said. Blair, any specific uh, policy changes you'd like to see for New Mexico? Uh, we would like to talk about the banning of high-capacity magazines, and we would like to see more regulations on semi-automatic and fully automatic weapons. Mm -hmm. Our bottom line is also that we do not want to arm our teachers, mm -hmm. and so that is definitely something we'd bring to that legislative session. So the next legislative session is a 60-day session. That means there's more time to talk about issues. Do you guys see yourselves going up to the legislature engaging with lawmakers next year? Um, we do have plans to go to the legislative session and do some policy work. But for us, uh, it's really about our uh, special session because what will, what will most likely happen, what we've seen in the past, is that when we do take gun reform bills to the legislatures that they'll be waited on. And even though it is a 60-day legislative session, who's to say that they are actually going to even address the bill? Right. Yeah. Something that's really unique about this, about young people such as yourselves leading this, both here in New Mexico and in other parts of the country, is that this has been an issue for decades, gun violence. What do you think could change when you guys engage in this conversation and lead this dialogue, especially here in New Mexico? Um, I think just students getting involved in being more informed and educated about the facts is what's really going to change the dialogue. Because I think to a lot of us, it feels like the adults who have, you know, it's been their responsibility to make these changes have kind of failed us. And 
I think we're all realizing we actually need to step up if we want to see change. Exactly, yeah, abs I completely agree with you. Um, I, I'm really hoping to see the political efficacy of uh, young individuals increase. Um, less than 3% of like 18 year olds went and voted in this uh, past election, which is just, it's too low. It's too low. If you are eligible to vote, go out and do that. And you know, um, I just, I really hope that this is this movement is something that really can have our voices heard because again we are youth we should not have to be the ones that are going out there and making a difference talking policies we should be sitting at home watching tv on our phones you know not having to worry about this or worrying about our math tests the next day not worrying about whether or not our governor is going to call an emergency legislative session to talk about our gun policies mm. There's a long history, though, of teenagers and young people leaving, leading civil rights movements in the United States. It's kind of interesting to think about how you guys, what you're doing now, compares to previous efforts. Riaz, what do you think? Um, well, I agree with both of them. I think we shouldn't even talk about it. It's not our job. Uh, it's adults' job to do their work. And um, there are uh, elected leaders, and I think they should represent their uh, uh, people in the NRA. Uh, yeah, that's all. I think for me it's also making sure that like they have mentioned that our politicians really represent the constituents that they have. And so like um, here in New Mexico where we are, um, I hate the term, but minority majority, and yeah, a lot of our, legisl our, leg um, our state Congress doesn't really represent, our state legislature doesn't really represent that. And so really making sure that those changes take place, but also pointing out that um, the differences between the new, the March for Our Lives movement and the response that we've had compared to like the Black Lives Matter movement or compared to Standing Rock, which are both movements that not many knew, but were started by the youth, and yet they didn't have, they didn't raise millions of dollars in two days. They didn't have rallies of thousands of people. You know, when the students at Standing Rock were being shot out with high water, high, um, high pressure water cannons in sub-zero sub degree temperatures, they didn't have thousands of people rallying for them things like that that we really need to pay attention to that this hasn't this isn't a new issue gun violence has really been an issue in um, communities of color for generations and that now that it's starting to affect other communities is starting to become an issue and we shouldn't have to get to that point I think so I mentioned earlier that there was a lot of diversity in the movement here in New Mexico do you think that'll make it stronger mm -hmm. having people from all I those think really making sure that something that we focused on is that for us it really isn't about the gun and we like a lot of people have tried to say oh you're trying to take all guns away but that isn't our point our point is that students deserve to be safe and that we need to make these changes to make sure that students feel safe in their classrooms Absolutely. Well, thank you all for joining us. We're going to put links to your organization on our website, and then we'll keep track of what you're doing next so that we can let people know uh, what your activities here in the state. Cool. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.